Welcome back, David and Kathleen. Workout two for the week. Today, that walking push-up is a little bit different. So you notice we've got that nice long interval that David hates with a passion. But good news, we're getting closer to taking a break on him. So this one is the walking push-up with the hands and the feet walking. So it should be a little bit easier than keeping the single leg and just walking the hands. Point being that if we make it a tiny bit easier, we can maybe stretch out how long we're able to do it for. So hands and feet are walking. That means the hands step together, feet come apart, and then finish into that big push-up. Hands together, feet apart, and push up. So we're just walking our way side to side on those. Next, we're gonna take those swimmers, which it's been a while, but we're gonna come all the way to the ground between them. So remember, swimmers are just our Superman, but we're taking single sides. So all the way stretched out, heels together. My right arm and my left leg are gonna lift, and then all the way back down. Lift, back down. Your goal is to keep your lift as straight as you can. So if I was in a very narrow hallway, if my arm and leg went out sideways, I'm gonna run into the walls. So I wanna try to keep as centered as I can. It may mean that you feel like your foot lifts or your hand lifts about an inch off the floor. That's okay, we're working with whatever range you have, but working with it correctly rather than using other muscle groups to lift. So lift, lower, lift, lower. Really engage the abs. We don't think about engaging the abs when we're lifting from the back, but it'll help make sure that your low back does not take the brunt of that exercise. Then we have our oblique crunch and reach. So on our side, elbow directly underneath that shoulder. Remember that you can cross the feet over or stack them completely up to you. We're gonna come up in that oblique position, take a small crunch, and then an arm reach overhead. Back to center, crunch, and reach. And then we'll switch sides and hit the half on the other side. Next, our half get up to single leg crabs. So remember on these, on your half get up, the leg that's in the air is the arm that's in the air. The leg on the ground is the arm on the ground. So we're gonna take that sit up first, or the half get up. From this position, we're taking a crab lift, tap that foot back down, all the way to the ground. David, just like on last week, I would like for you to stay on the same side. What you may need to do to take pressure off of that knee is just to let it go straight and you go down. That's fine. If you need to let it straighten back out before you switch, uh, before you do the next one, that's perfectly fine. If you can keep it bent and keep working that same side before you switch, even better. All right, back on the feet. Kettlebell lateral stepping sumo squat. So again, just like workout one, we're gonna start trying to incorporate that lateral without actually bending through it. So, Kettlebells hanging to center. I'm gonna start centered, step out into a wide leg position. Once I land wide legged, then I'm gonna take my sumo squat all the way back up, then bring it back together. So for you guys, I don't want David especially, I don't want you stepping very far. Because if you step really far, that's gonna put a lot more landing weight on that lateral position of the knee. It's also going to make you push harder laterally to get back up. So think small step, toes out, nice wide squat, and then use both legs to kind of get back in. So again, we're trying to increase the lateral without really pushing it too far. Then we've got our kettlebell swing. You guys know that swing. Single arm if you need to, or single arm if you want a little bit of variety and a little extra weight. All righty. Band chest fly. We know this guy. Facing away, arms nice and wide. Big squeeze, open, squeeze, and open. Work on that range of motion. Really trying to open them back. Kathleen, this is a good one for you to work on the range of motion since we know you're a little tighter through those shoulders. 
The more we can open the shoulders in the back, the easier like that T pull is gonna be. Band tricep. So facing the same way, we're gonna go right into that tricep extension. Remember the elbows do not move. The arms are covering the ears the whole time. Now if you want to make this one a little bit harder without having to uh, move the body too much, one thing I like to do is take my hand on the band instead of the handle. I get a little bit more strict tricep out of it when I hold the band. So it's up to you, but if you're looking for a little bit of variety, something different, grab that band and try that out. Okay, last one. Our band squatting lateral press. So on this one, I want you to find a comfortable laterally squatted position. So laterally, we just turn sideways, basically. A tiny bit of a bend in the knees, and we're just gonna stabilize right here. Press in, press in. You know all the cues on this one. You wanna make sure that that band stays straight out from the sternum. It's not pulling you back. I want you to try to stay in that lateral squat. It's gonna force a little bit of pressure on the outside of this knee and on the inside of this knee. Um, so again, trying to increase that work laterally that we're doing. If it's an absolute no, if you do, David, if you do a couple and there's like no way that you can even hold that lateral position, even if you're not bent, you can always take a foot in front into more of a lunge position. That's fine too. Do what you gotta do. All right, guys, have a great workout, and I look forward to hearing from you. See you soon, guys.